Art has always been part of my life, as it is part of the life of my family, the family in which I grew up, as well as the family that I raised. We all did various forms of art. We had music lessons. We went to the Art Institute of Chicago as members. We participated. Much later in life, I had a sketchbook at all times. I never called myself an artist. It was just, uh, that just seemed a natural part of what some people did. I actually met John uh, at the Art Institute of Chicago. It was a time when both he and my brother and I, as well as many others, were stu studying there after World War II and the veterans had the GI Bill of Rights, which paid their tuition for advanced schooling. Uh, both my brother and John returned to the School of the Art Institute. And I happened to be there at that time, too. So Josh, my brother, and John became really good friends and remained so for the rest of their lives. And it was through Josh that I met John. He, at the time, was married and had three little boys. But uh, at some point, it became clear that John and his wife were not doing well together, and that marriage broke up. And John and I became closer and uh, eventually married and started a family. But the school itself was a full-time situation and it was an all-around art education. John uh, did sculpture there, studied sculpture, as well as the graphic arts, lots of drawing always, and lots of painting, lots of figurative work. Those were the days when studying the human figure was a natural and, and pervasive part of being an art student. So the whole art world was familiar with figure drawing. Of course, there were movements away from that as well. But getting to know the human figure was something that stuck with John and with me as well. My interest in it has uh, remained through the years. When we do look at a very few select works of his today, I'm going to be sure to remind you that in any work of art, there is the abstract element. In other words, when we look at a figure, or in this case, we'll be looking at two figure sculptures, you will take note of how it is constructed, what the structure and what the balance is, what the rhythms are, all the abstract elements, the dance. John sometimes would compare drawings and sketching to poetry in writing. And he would sometimes compare a work that took way longer time, like a major sculpture, to a symphony. In other words, there are different dimensions that come into works of art. That doesn't diminish the value of either one of these. It just sort of differentiates. I will say that in his working in depth and in much time with each individual who became his model, who worked along with him, he became aware of the beauty of individual differences. And this was very exciting to him. You might say it became his theme song. So sometimes people like to look at his figures and think of them as classical art. But he did not think of them as classical art. Occasionally, there might be a model who had a classical kind of figure, and then you get that reference. But basically, he was interested in something else, which was individual beauty, individual excellence, and how to portray the individualness of each person. He felt that you as a person are seen 
through your whole body. And that's why he chose to do mostly figures without clothing. And he also felt that clothing kind of dated a work because styles change. But the human figure has more universality to it. And so that's how we look at these things. We look at the whole figure and you will see rhythms, positions, and abstract elements that tell the story as well as emotional contact that we relate to and resonate with. And again, as I've said, I'm going to talk today about certain pieces he did which are relational. They are two figures that have become one sculpture. Looking at art can take place in different contexts. You may walk into a museum and see things that are well preserved and cared for. The temperature is controlled, etc. There's space, there's lighting. That's very good. And you're able to focus on a work of art. It might be in your own home. You have decided to acquire something, or maybe you didn't decide, maybe it decided to come to you in some way. And you have it in the context of your life. You see it morning, noon, and night, walk around it, see it from different views, and it's yours. Today you're going to look at work in a natural environment. These sculptures are bronze. Bronze can withstand weather, so they do wonderfully outdoors. And something about the space outdoors can enhance them. People who acquire works of these bronze uh, sometimes have remarked back to us that they just love seeing it at sunrise and seeing it at sundown and so on when they have it outdoors in their own yard. So just remember that the work itself and your experience of it is somehow affected by the environment in which you encounter it. And um, also, I have also encouraged people to allow time to experience a work solo or sola and have an internal, personal, individual experience before you do any sharing with your friends about how you felt or what you saw. Because we each, certainly John and I learned how we each see very differently we used to make up a game where we tested telling each other what we saw and the other one visualized it. And of course, what the other one visualized was totally different from what the first one saw because translating to words and then to your own experience that influences how you perceive. We each have our own experience of art. John called this grouping the circle of womanhood, and it's part of a larger grouping of three different groupings, the whole thing being called generations. John was interested in hoping that his sculpture could actually bridge what we used to call the generation gap. And so he talked about doing an intergenerational grouping and so for a whole number of years, he worked on the intergenerational grouping. This is a four-figure grouping. And we're going to focus today on the mother and child. This one figure, or one sculpture, it's actually three figures if you count the one that's in her belly which was soon to come out. When we see the mother and child, you see that it is one sculpture. The body of the child lines up along the curves of the mother's body 
and we get a certain rhythm of the arms, a rhythm of the legs and the knees. We get a little dance as we walk around it and see how the angles change by our movement around the sculpture to the baby, the mother, the baby, the mother. And then there's the emotional thing where I might say, is the baby saying to his mother, or her mother, really, keep your chin up, Mom. They both seem to be looking out into the world. And in much of John's work, including this, there's a sense of the person looking inward, looking outward, but there's an inward aspect to it. It's very important in a sculpture in the round to walk all around it. John used to say, a sculpture has no front. He meant that you must walk all around it to experience all that there is to experience. And of course, that could include looking at it from above, looking at it from below, and allowing yourself to receive, receive, and receive. Much, much time has gone into the making of a work like this, and it has much, much gift to offer over endless periods of time.